Hello, I'm happy to kick off this session with a description of our uh, web app uh, designed to help visualize population responses of auditory nerve and midbrain models. This project was kicked off by a call from NIH, the National Institutes for Deafness Communication Disorders, a call to develop cloud-based auditory models. And that motivated us to take our uh, pre-existing uh, computational models and move them onto a web app that could be hosted on a public machine. Um, this uh, web app allows you to run, run simulations, download the results as figures, um, Soon we'll be downloading them as uh, data files. And the first app uh, that I'll discuss focuses on the responses of auditory nerve and midbrain neurons. Uh, to most of the standard psychophysical stimuli, as well as audio files that a user can upload. So the ingredients of the, uh, of the code that's hosted on this site are auditory nerve models. Um, which are basically take an arbitrary stimulus waveform that's scaled in Pascals, so it can be matched exactly to a psychophysical or physiological experiment. Uh, and the output of the model is a rate function, which is proportional to the probability of firing of an individual neuron as a function of time. The current model is that of the Jelani et al, 2014, but another model that's hosted in the web app is the more recent model of Bruce et al. Uh, and we're planning to upload future models as they're developed, such as a, a new one that our lab's developing that includes efference. The output of the model can be used as the input to higher level models, such as a midbrain model, uh, simply by taking the output, using it as the input to that model. And then finally, we get a rate function from the responses of the midbrain uh, neurons. The, Models uh, currently hosted on the web app focus on including modulation tuning, which is a key feature of IC neurons. Most published models are for single neurons, and the uh, key parameter, of course, is the CF or center frequency. But a, a major goal of this web app is to help visualize population responses. So we presume listeners or behavioral uh, animals are using their entire population of neurons to do a task. So it's important to have some representation of that population response if we want to try to predict those responses, as well as to understand effects of sound pressure level and hearing loss on the global response of the population of neurons. So going from single neuron code, which is widely available, to looking at populations it can be a problem. Uh, for, for people not as experienced with programming. So we wanted to make that much more accessible. Um, and we the tool for doing so, we, we call UR EAR for the University of Rochester envisioning auditory responses. So a key is going from single fiber responses, such as two responses shown here, in response to a sinusoidally modulated tone. Uh, some frequencies have very strong beating responses, others don't. Um, but we can pull those into a population response to introduce this, the, the format of the population responses that we'll show. Um, I'll illustrate this with a little video. So this shows several responses of auditory nerve fibers, different CFs, all shown as a function of time. And they're rotated from a side view uh, to perhaps less common top view looking down. Um, so again, if we go back and look at a, uh, this response, you can see that those the single fiber responses um, here were mapped into rows within this population response, which now has BF as the vertical axis or, or the characteristic frequency and time along the x-axis. So you can see that some of the channels beat strongly, as does this channel. Others have a flat response. Uh, similarly, the IC uh, responses will be mapped into a population response. And just again, to illustrate how that's done, we have an image that goes from the so-called side view, where you see responses as a function of time for many BFs, and gradually rotate it till we're looking down 
um, from above. And that's what's illustrated here. So again, some channel, the channels that beat very strongly are shown with the, the strong warm colors. And this channel, which is actually tuned at the carrier frequency, but has a very weak response because its inputs are uh, not fluctuating, is shown as the dark stripe here. So now we'll look, take a look at the actual web app. Um, it's illustrated here. Uh, the site is you are here. Uh, we'll have the link in a later slide. Um, but when you uh, run this app, um, you it opens up to show three main panels. The left handmost panel is for the stimulus parameters. As I mentioned, you can upload an audio file here, uh, scale it sound level and so forth, or select one of a number of different stimuli. And when you select different stimuli, um, the appropriate parameters are uh, made available for entering. The middle panel uh, describes the auditory nerve and inferior colliculus models. Uh, so those can be selected uh, here. The numbers of fibers that would be averaged within each frequency channel, the range of frequencies and number of channels, species and spontaneous rate are all selectable. And for this community, um, I think an interesting feature is the ability to enter an audiogram, either for our, an average listener or for a, an individual, um, in order to see the effects of hearing loss on the responses of the neurons. The IC models are available here, two simple models, and a best modulation frequency. Um, when the model is run, see here, this was the response to two vowel sounds, um, <clears throat> which can be visualized here. By, by clicking on the plots, you toggle between two conditions if you did enter two conditions. Uh, the left hand most plots illustrate the responses to the, the, or the stimulus, the spectrogram, and the spectrum. The middle column is the auditory nerve and IC responses. Um, and on the right are average rates over time. So the average of each channel over time is illustrated here for the auditory nerve and the IC. Bottom most plots are we refer to as the wide display, which show just a larger view of the stimulus waveform over time, spectrogram, the ice inner hair cell model, auditory nerve, and midbrain or IC model. The top of the uh, GUI are buttons for um, accessing a manual that's on our OSF website for looking at FAQs. Uh, when we get them, we'll post answers there and a contact button for sending questions. So what's next uh, is to develop some more apps beyond this, this basic a visualization tool that I showed you. We're interested in illustrating longer responses to stimuli such as music and speech, um, to providing an app that will give easier access to our physiological data that could be uh, plotted and compared to the model responses, and also a tool to estimate psychophysical responses from the population model responses. Uh, and finally, apps that would allow you to gradually change sound level and degree of hearing loss, for example. We're open and uh, interested in getting suggestions for new or different types of applications that we might be able to develop. Um, and finally, the app is located at this link and the open source code is available on our OSF website. Thanks, and I look forward to questions.